What are you doing here? This is not going on. It's not happening this year. Go away. You again? Look, I've told you once already. There is no Nissa this year. This is August. We're not going to have Nissa. And you really don't want to be here right now, okay? Seriously? Come on, guys. This is me time. This is for me right now. Okay, fine. Boy, you're persistent. If you don't know me, I'm Greg Lundek. Welcome to my NISA Visual Arts Virtual Workshop. I'll be covering a relief sculpture project with you made of materials that you can find around the home. By the end, you'll have a small portfolio quality piece of artwork. The sculpture will be constructed with low-tech materials, but low-tech doesn't mean low quality. The finished work will be as polished and sophisticated as your efforts allow. If it isn't painfully obvious, this is the first time I've created this kind of video, so please bear with me and forgive the quality of it. There are a number of steps in the development of this work, so I'll try to be as clear and organized as possible. I've broken the presentation into two sections. This is one of the introduction, and I'll be showing you examples of reference images and talking about the goal of the project. In the second, I'll show you how to construct the work. There may be some overlap and redundancy as I'm splicing a few different examples together, but in the end, they're all about the same project. You'll be constructing a type of relief sculpture made from paper and developing the surface of the work using materials that can create rich, solid hues such as colored pencils, markers, or gouache. Use what you're comfortable with, or better, try something new, and expand on your technical knowledge. Either way, I strongly recommend doing tests prior to committing to the final work. A relief sculpture is usually classified as an object from which elements project from a plane and viewed primarily from one perspective. Some are referred to as low relief, where the carving is shallow, but the depth can go deeper, called high relief and the subject seems much more removed from the surface. The illusion of depth comes from the same techniques and elements you'd find in drawing, such as scale, perspective, and texture, but a sculptural device is the use of undercuts. These undercuts create lines and convey a separation from other surfaces. As you see here, color and value can help further separate and define the subject matter within your composition. You'll be constructing the work using multiple layers of paper that when combined will become the finished piece. Here are some examples of what you can accomplish with paper. The materials using a sharp blade lends itself to fine detail and relatively strong structures. This image is similar to what you'll be creating in that it's made up of several layers. The number of layers and amount of detail is up to you. There are some limitations, but those can be broken with a little imagination. These images show a progression in the finished work. This work was done with just white paper, and I've had students do similar projects. The separation of layers, even when the paper is glued directly to another piece, is visible because of the edges and slight shadow. This one is made more apparent because of the depth of its parts. Your project won't have to incorporate folding and bending, but again, that's up to you. These two relief sculptures are distant cousins of what you'll be making. They're amazing. I wanted to show you these because they're made of cardboard and, and, and to see what low-tech materials can be turned into. So about the sculpture itself, there were a few reasons I developed this project. First, there are a lot of things going on in the world. There's a lot to be angry or worried about. But there are people, perhaps you're one of them, that are trying to make things better, saner. These people are doing good things and should be recognized for their efforts. Second, there are traditions of highlighting these individuals and creating art about them. I work at a school where a number of artworks based on some of these people are displayed. The art can be quite beautiful, 
but there are many variations of this practice found in numerous cultures. Many times they are connected to beliefs, but I wanted students to understand that their work needn't be associated with religious traditions. To that point, here are a number of images, both classical and contemporary, that use visual and structural format, but are not conceptually tied to belief systems. These images focus on an individual, use objects and symbols related to them, are very stylized, vibrant, and ornamental. Even today, artists can be found using the template of this type of work. Here you see a mural done by high school student Chloe Baker. She wanted to create a piece about racism in the Catholic Church. In the mural, she portrays four black saints dressed in contemporary apparel. Kehinde Wiley has created several pieces along the same lines, and though similar stylistically, they are not meant as religious works, but rather a comment on Western art and he wanted to show people of color in the same heroic fashion. Photographer Gabriel Garcia Roman, in his series Queer Icons, also shows people in religious style. To be clear, while many of these images hint at religious traditions, your work can be as secular or non-secular as you like. There's some build-up, huh? Now to the question of what is this sculpture? The name of the project was originally Saint Me, and it was developed as a self-portrait that asked my high school students to highlight their best qualities and how those qualities could propel them towards eventual sainthood. Knowing how self-conscious people can be, I've opened the idea up for you to include anyone you feel is exceptional besides yourself. Before you do any actual making, it would be good to get some out an outline in place. There'll be plenty of opportunity for you to alter your plans. First, you'll need to put some thought and research as to who and why of the piece. Questions to ask yourself are, who deserves to be recognized this way? The answer could be anyone. A friend, a relative, someone you know of but don't know personally, or back to the idea of self-portrait, even yourself. What have they done to be a saint? What is it they've done? What are they known for? Who have they helped? Where or when did they do this? These questions should lead you to ask what imagery could be used within the sculpture to help viewers understand why these people stand out, what elements could be incorporated to help your audience. In the end, you won't be there to explain the meaning of things and your project needs to be readable. The sculpture will be a variation of what's called a retablo. Here are some examples. A retablo is typically a devotional painting, but when placed within a setting, the image may be combined with sculptural objects or be sculptural themselves. They tend to be detailed and have ornate frames or structures around them. Again, they need not be religious. The one on the right may be too cryptic here. These are a few pieces done by my students. They are two feet by three feet and two inches deep. You see in the images things personal to them, their interests and goals. Take note that the frames are meant to draw viewers in but not overwhelm or distract from the subject matter. See also how the depth of the retablo becomes like a window into the world of the subject. Hopefully you're still with me. That's the end of this video. In the next one I'm going to demonstrate the actual construction of your Saint Relief Sculpture.